sometimes I really don't know what to tell people. Whoops. They get all shook up. <laughs> and I didn't plan that. It just happened. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That's kind of what my life has been about. It just happened. You know, God kind of like caused me to be born. God kind of like took, it to, could, took care of me as I was growing. God, as a matter of fact, has taken care of me all my life. You know, there's a scripture that says that he would be a father to the fatherless. Well, for me, <laughs> once I found out about it, I was kind of happy. Because, <laughs> quite frankly, I didn't have much of a father around. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, what's interesting to me is that people really think I'm kidding when I say, hey, you know, the country is going through a drought, but I'm not. The country's going through, like, you know, all these different turmoils of weird weather and I'm kind of like living in an area where it's like guess what we got cloud cover and we've been having like we had a few hundred degree weather but that was it and then it went down to 90 and 80s and today's going to be pretty cool as a matter of fact almost <laughs> cold matter of fact I'm chilly I got sweats on and I'm cold imagine that most of the country is really going through it golly gee you know I think if I was in another part of the country you know then maybe God would make me understand that part and I'd be ready for it and I wouldn't mind it but you see sometimes people get into the news and they read these stories and they go oh the sky is falling well maybe it is no nah, not yet one day it will but until then the reality is the Sun's rising Clouds are up, rain might fall. God causes the sun to shine and rain to fall, and the wicked and the good. I personally kind of like that because it tells me everything's okay. Oh, maybe your house got blown down. That's okay. <gasps> what are you saying? I lost my house and all my possessions. Are you alive? Well, yeah. Well, did you lose a loved one? Well, yeah, and I'm miserable about it. Well, did they go home to be with the Lord? Well, yeah, that's true. They they went home to be with Jesus, but, you know, never mind. I want them here now. So you want them in hell with you rather than in heaven with Jesus. Well, when you put it that way, no. But I miss them. Well, of course. You miss Jesus, too, and I'm looking forward to seeing them. <laughs> Come on, get a grip. Where's the reality in your life? Quit being so self-centered and get God-centered because when God is your center you can't be caught up in the world and its worries and its frets and its cares because guess what count it all joy brethren when you fall into divers trials and tribulations knowing that the working of your faith produces patience but let patience have its perfect work that the man of God might be fully equipped for every good work and everything that's going to happen in the world because if you would just get the scriptures in your head put it there so it would be in your heart. God could remind you what's supposed to be your attitude and your actions every day. You know, kind of like, well, yeah, you know, the world's kind of coming to an end, but guess what? <laughs> God's in control. Yeah, you know, there seems to be a famine going on, but you know what? God's in control. Yeah, there seems to be a drought, but you know, God's in control. Matter of fact, you know, not really too worried about anything because, dare I say it? God is in control. If he's got the whole world in his hands, oh, wait a minute. He doesn't have the whole world in his hands. He's got the universe in the span of one hand. Bing, bing. Hmm. I think he's got the whole world, too, in his hands. I think he can handle everything that's going on with man. And I think that man is the one who gets a little carried away about thinking he's so important <coughs> that something that's really God's not worried about man is all consumed about it's kinda like your daddy's you know gonna say hey you know what come on up here sit in my lap for a while let me tell you about the universe you know here let me show you the moon and the stars and the suns and the planets you know and everything else that I got in store for you once you come home to be with me but in the meantime hey don't sweat it take it easy relax just do what I say and you'll be okay you know, might go through little trials, you know, tribulations, but hey, you know, I already warned you ahead of time. So, what's your problem? No problem. You got me. Hey, with me, 
You can do anything, but you might die. Yeah, that's true, but I'm going to resurrect you. You might have to give up some of your life, but hey, I said that it was worth it. You might have to, you know, like deny yourself, but I told you what you would get in the end. So, being your father, can I say something to you, my child? Grow up! <laughs> Get real! He's God! Go with the flow. Brethren, for this reason, in spite of all of our stress and crushing difficulties, we have been filled with comfort and cheer about you because of your faith, the leaning of your whole personality on God in complete trust and confidence. 1 Thessalonians 3.7 Go with the flow. Stop being anxious about things that may never happen or you're not in control of. As a matter of fact, you probably aren't in charge of. As a matter of fact, you probably are worrying needlessly about something that God says, be anxious for nothing. Oh, wait a minute. I'm not anxious. I'm just worried. Oh, wait a minute. I'm not worried. I'm just anxious. Well, worry or anxious, guess what? Either one isn't faith. You see, faith is just really, if you have intelligent faith, then you know the scriptures because intelligent faith isn't blind faith see there's blind faith and a lot of people have it that are Christians they think that they just work up some emotional feelings on Sunday so that they can blindly run out on Monday and go through the week till Friday and hopefully survive through Saturday nights and Friday nights until they get to Sunday where they can with blind faith once again put feelings back in store where they can say guess what I've got it all stored up my batteries are charged I'm ready to go for the week <laughs> sounds like stupid faith to me <laughs> I mean faith is just knowing that God's in control hey if God's in control what are you worried about if I know that if I walk over and flip the switch the lights gonna come on uh, that's faith you see I pretty much have confidence that God is going to save me because he said so. You know, I pretty much have confidence that God is going to change me because he said so. As a matter of fact, I have confidence in God because he told me so. You know, that I could have confidence in him, so I figured, hey, you made me, so it's your, tur your turn, you're the creator, I'm the creation, you got to make me, you change me. And he does. So, really, really, what are you worried about? Get a grip. Come on. Get real. Grow up. If you really trust God, you don't need a backup plan. You don't need a savings plan. You don't need a escape plan. Matter of fact, <laughs> you just need to plan on with God, with Him. Because guess what? <laughs> if you can't take thought for your, you know, tomorrow, but you need to just worry about today for what can you do, but, you know, can you cause yourself to grow a little taller? Can you grow another hair on your head? Can you do all these wonderful things that Jesus said that you probably shouldn't be worried about? Take no thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow shall take care of itself. Ooh, wait a minute. Jesus said that? You mean the Son of God said, don't worry about tomorrow? Well, let me tell you a little story. There was a man who said and had a plan. He said, you know what? I got to have a retirement plan. I got to get my 401k together. I got to get my stocks in order. I got to get my house built. I got to get my barns bigger because you know what? I got all this stuff and I need to take care of it. So I'm going to build a bigger barn. I'm going to put my investments in. I'm going to get take out a loan. I'm going to swap my stocks. I'm going to roll over my 401k. And guess what? Thou fool, God said. Thou fool. Tonight, your soul is required of you. <gasps> oh. oh, well. Nice retirement plan. And check out. Guess what? Your plans are not his plans. Neither are your ways his ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your thoughts my thoughts, God says. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so are my ways above your ways, and beyond finding out. But God says, hey, if you trust me with all your heart, don't lean in your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge me, I'll direct your path. I will point you 
in the right direction, I will tell you specifically every step of the way what to do. I will tell you to turn to the right, to turn to the left, to take a step forward, to take a step back, to stand still, to wait, to go, to be, to live. But you see, that means really a tough kind of situation here. That means one of the hardest things you're going to have to do is admit God, your crutch. Ooh. You mean I gotta, like, communicate with God? I have to relate with God? I have to interpolate with God in some way that I can understand Him and He understands me and we kind of, like, you know, listen and talk to each other? <laughs> I like being in charge. Yeah, that's true. You do. So you go build your barns, you know, and kind of see what happens tonight when you go to bed. Good luck! Life will always be stressful. Faith means that you have peace even when you don't have all the answers. If you try to rearrange life, if you try to arrange life, if you try to do anything about life without knowing Jesus, who said, I am the way, the truth, the life, then you will not have life. You will be running from life. But planning for obstacles will inspire you to leave a little earlier for your appointments and keep you from hurrying. Grow in wisdom and place high priority on keeping your peace in spite of any jams you may get into today. Because you see, the reason why you need a little extra time is because you really need to listen a little closer. You really need to pay attention a lot more in these latter days that we live in. Because after all, God might say to you today, Don't go to work. It's going to blow up. <gasps> Don't get on that jet plane. All your bags are packed, but it's going to blow up. <gasps> and then maybe not. Maybe he just wants you to stay home to minister to your children, to your wife, to your husband, to your sons or daughters. Maybe they have a need, and you're not listening to what God is telling you to do today. Choose you this day whom you will serve. The answer will be how you lead your day from beginning to end. Your way or God's way. <laughs>